This is a short homework on differentiation and we've got three questions to complete. I would say it would take about maybe 15 minutes. What I would do is if you don't have the homework, um, freeze the video and answer the questions and then play the video and see um, how you would complete this type of work. Let's go ahead and start. Okay, so we're going to differentiate and we're going to leave our answers with a positive index. First thing here I've got for 1a, I've got uh, first term is okay to differentiate straight away, second term I need to prepare that a bit. So first thing is that I'm going to prepare that second term. So minus sign, what I want to do is I want to make sure there's no x's on the, the bottom, on the denominator, and I want to make sure there's no roots either. So I'm going to have to prepare that type of thing before I go ahead and differentiate. Right, so first thing I've got here is I've got x to the power of 4. Now what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to take that to the top and make it a minus 4, or x to the minus 4. The number that I've got sitting at the front is the half that's there. And the common mistake is to take the 2x to the minus 4 to the top, and that would be, that would be an error. We're going to start with um, the half that we've got. Got an x and to the power of minus 4. Okay, I'm now set to differentiate. Let's go ahead and do that. dy by dx is equal to. So differentiation technique, uh, the power times the coefficient at the front and reduce the power by 1. So that's what we're going to do. So 6 times 3 is 18. x to the power of 5. Now I've got two negative signs here. So that'll make a positive. 4 times a half, that's going to give me 2, and x to the power of, and taking 1 off minus 4, that takes me down to minus 5. I'm going to write it with a positive index, so it's 18x to the power of 5, plus 2, and just like we did up above, the only thing that has the power associated with it is the x, so that there, down to the bottom. So that will be all over x to the power of a positive 5. That's that question complete. So on to B. Two of these are set up okay. I can go ahead and straight uh, differentiate them. Uh, the only thing is I've got some fractions to deal with and we'll work that one through. So dy by dx. So three fifths times the one that's sitting at the front. That'll be three fifths x. And the way that I deal with uh, fractions is that I always look at the, uh, the denominator. It's a five. I'm going to take the 5 away from the numerator. So the numerator is a 3. So 3, take away 5, that gives me minus 2. And that's all over 5. With the next one, I've got two minus signs. So that's going to be a positive I'll get out of that. So that would be 5 thirds when I multiply the two of these together. Remember the one sitting at the front. And same technique. I'm going to assign that minus there to the 5. So that's a minus 5 over 3. So if I take 3 away from minus 5, I get minus 8. So that'll be x to the minus 8, and I'm working with thirds. So that's a 3 on the bottom that's there. Right, I have to write it with a positive index. So if I write it with a positive index, there's the 3 fifths. The x goes to the bottom, and that's 2 over 5 positive. Okay. Then I've got the plus 5 thirds. I've got the x to the minus 8 over 3, so that's going to be x to the 8 over 3. Okay, so, so what that does is it gives me it with a positive index. If I had to change it back to uh, a root form, then I could change it to root form if I really wanted. I wouldn't really need to in this case here. So we'll have a root. The bottom, which is the 5, that would be a small 5 that's there. x and the power would go there. So that's us. Plus 5 over 3. And I've got root, and the root's going to be the third root, or the cube root, and it's going to be to the power of 8. So that would be that question complete there as well. So there's A, there's B. Right, so looking at this question here, a couple of roots in it. So I can't have roots and I can't have x's on the bottom, so I'm going to have to do something a bit extra with this one here. Right, so to change it from a root, I've got x, that's a power, that's the root. So if you imagine it like a flower, the root is at the bottom, so that would be a 3 on the bottom, and the power up at the top. Okay, And I've got a plus 1 all over, and I'm going to just change that to index form first of all. So the power at the top, root at the bottom, so that would be 6 over 5. Can't have the x's on the bottom, so this guy here, 
up to the top and it will become a negative. So I'll get x to the 2 upon 3 plus, and remember that number at the front's a third. I'm not taking that 3 up because that's really nothing to do with that power. So that's a third the number that's sitting there. And that will be x to the power of minus 6 over 5. Right, so I'm going to deal with the, the fractions the same way as I dealt with these ones here. So once we differentiate, so dy by dx, that's going to be equal to, so 2 thirds, 2 thirds times 1, x to the power of, so take 3 away from 2. So that gives me minus 1, and I'm dealing with thirds, so minus 1 over 3. Right, so I'm going to differentiate here. I've got a positive and a negative, and I'm going to multiply that out there. So if I'm multiplying a third, and I'm going to multiply that by 6 over 5, then I would just usually cancel that down. So what that should give me is going to be 2 over 5. That should be what goes there. Let me just check and make sure that I'm on the right track. Let's see, that's 6 over 5. Yeah, that's, that's looking okay there. Okay, so that's going to be 2 over 5 that's going to be here. So that's going to be a minus, remember. So a minus 2 over 5. And that's going to be x to the power of. So I'm going to assign the negative sign to the 6. So 5 away from minus 6, that would take me down to minus 11. And that's going to be all over 5. Because I'm dealing with fifths. Right then, so... With a writing it with a positive power, so there's 2 over 3x to the third for that one, just taking that part down to the bottom, and minus 2, and there's my 5, and that's going to be x to the 11 over 5, and that's positive. So that would be with a positive index. If I've been given it in root form, then it might be a bit nicer to, to rewrite it back into root form. So that's a cubed root, so that's a cubed root of x and the 1 would be a power of 1 that's there. I've got minus 2 fifths and we've got a fifth root so that's the fifth root and I've got a power of 11 to go on to there. So that's what that one there will kind of finish up being. Okay let's move on to question 2. So question 2. Right so for f of x uh, equaling 4x to the 3 upon 2, find f dash 0, f dash 1, f dash 4, f dash 1 ninth. Right, so first thing I have to do here is I know that I'm going to have to differentiate first of all and then substitute these values in here. So let's go ahead and do that. So set up okay to do that. If I've got f of x, then I'm going to be working out f dash x. So usual way I'll do it. I'll write this in. So I've got 3 upon 2 times by 4 x and then I'm going to take the 2 away from the 3 which gives me a 1 and I'm dealing with halves so that would be 1 over 2. If I work this part out here I can get 12 over 2 that will give me 6 or I can cancel the 2, cancel the 4, 3 times 2 is 6 so that should give me 6x to the power of a half. Now, if I've got 6x to the power of a half, and I know I'm going to substitute numbers in, for me, I like to see it in the root form. So I can see that that's going to be 6 times the square root of x. Remember the 2 appearing here, which is the square root, and the 1 appearing up top there. So that's it differentiated, okay? Let's go for part A. So for part A, we're going to substitute in 0 into the equation. So what I've got is 6 times root 0 root 0 is 0, so my answer there should be 0. For part b, I'm going to be substituting 1. So I'll be 6 times root 1. So that's going to be 6 times 1, which gives me an answer of 6. For part c, I'm going to substitute in 4. So I've got 6 times root 4, which will be 6 times 2, which will give me 12. And for d, so we're going to substitute in a ninth, so 6 times uh, square root of 1 ninth. So remember how we deal with uh, the, the root of a fraction. We can make it split the root into the numerator and denominator, and then just take the, the square root of it. So the square root of 1 will be 1, 
square root of 9 is 3, and then 6 times a third, or a third of 6, is going to give me an answer of 2. So that's uh, two of the questions completed. Okay. So we'll move on to the third question. We've got two parts to that. We've got an A and B section. So what we've got is a, a kind of more complicated fraction. I'm going to try and leave it with a positive index as well. We're going to have a look at this one. Right, so the first thing that I think about doing is to split the fraction here. So when I've got something on the denominator, I've got something more on the top. What I'll do is I'll split that into three parts. So what we've got is, I'm only going to prepare it, 3x cubed all over x squared. There's my minus sign there, and that's 3x squared all over x squared, and I've got plus 5, and that's going to be all over x squared. Right, so I'm going to have to differentiate, so I'm going to have to prepare it and work my index indices out here, okay? So remember in your indices, again I'll write this out, I wouldn't normally, but I've got 2x to the power of 3, and when I'm dividing uh, indices, what I'll do is I'll subtract the, the numbers that we've got there, okay? So that's going to be 3 minus 2. For here, I've got 3x to the power of 2 minus 2. And at the end here, I've got plus 5, and that's going to be x to the, the minus 2 that appears up there. Right, for there, I'll just sort that out a bit more. So I've got 2x to the power of 1. I've got minus 3x to the power of 0. I'm going to write that in, okay? And I've got plus 5x to the minus 2. Now, this one here, if you know, remember from that 5, your x to the power of 0 is going to be equal to 1. So what I'm going to be differentiating... 2x minus 3 plus 5x to the power of minus 2. And here we go. Go ahead and differentiate. So everything up to this point is preparing. Right, so we know that 2x, if it's a power of 1, we've got 1 times 2, which gives me 2. I'm going to write this again, x to the power of 0, okay? Wouldn't normally write this line in, I would go straight to the, the final line. Um, this one here, well, if it's a constant that we're just integrate, uh, sorry, differentiating, that will, that will go to zero. So that's going to be minus zero. I'll put that in just now as well. And the last part, minus two times five will give me minus 10, x to the power of minus three. So I know that that there itself is equal to one. So that just gives me an answer of two. That disappears and I've got minus 10, x to the power of minus three. To write it with a positive index, positive index would be, so my dy by dx, 2 minus 10, the only part that goes to the bottom, that one there, so that's going to be x to the power of 3, and that's that part completed. Last part, okay, so for part b. Okay, so what we've got is we've got some, some roots in here, we've got it squared as well. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to write it out like foil. Uh, I'm just going to do it that way. Uh, it's the most common way that most people would do it. Um, and I'm going to change roots to the power of, remember there's a 2 there and a 1 there. So that'll be x to the power of a half. Okay. So here I've got x to the power of a half. And I've got minus... 3 x to the power of a half and then I'll go for same again okay so because it's squared I'm going to multiply the two brackets out um, let's go for first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lift that up to the top just to get my indices um, all on the top so that's minus 3 x to the power of minus a half that's going to be x to the power of a half minus 3x to the power of minus a half, okay? So that's us ready to, to get started. Right, so not to differentiate yet, we're still preparing. So I'm going to multiply the brackets out. So it'll be the firsts. So the first part's going to be x to the power of a half times x to the power of a half. We add the indices together. A half plus a half is x, and I'm going to put a power of 1 there so you know where that comes from. So the, that was the first, the outsides, that will be x to the half times minus 3, x to the minus a half. So a half plus minus a half, well that's going to be x to the power of 0. The insides, they're going to be the same as well. So that's minus 3, x to the power of 0. And the lasts, 
2 minus sine, so give me a positive. 3 times 3 gives me 9. X to the power of, and I've got minus a half plus minus a half. That will be minus 1. So that makes it look a little bit easier than what we started off with. I'm going to gather up the middle terms. And remember, that's going to be just a 1. So that makes minus 3. That's minus 3. So I've got x minus 6. And that's going to be plus 9. x to the power of minus 1. Right, so now I'm ready to differentiate, eventually. So here we go. dy by dx is equal to, so a 1 there, 1 there. So that's going to be 1 x to the power of 0. So that would be just 1. This goes to 0, and then that's going to be minus 9 x to the power of minus 2. To write it with a positive index, 1 minus 9 on the top, x to the power of 2. Boink. And that would be that complete. So just three quick questions. Um, what you should do, should have been doing is just try to answer the question yourself and then go back and see how I've, I've looked at it. Um, some people might have better ways of doing this, quicker ways of doing it. Um, good luck, good luck, okay? And uh, hope this helps uh, you with uh, some tips on differentiation.